Hey, how y'all doing? Um, Cola Music Guitar is here. <laughs> How's it going? Um, today's video, for all my great viewers at home, um, is playing a badging tracks. I've made a few videos on this, and this one happens to be um, Emotional Shed Backing Track in E Minor. Uh, SZBT291, and that refers to um, the number in the catalog. If you go to Bandcamp, which, and I actually purchased this tune because I liked it so much. Um, I like playing it to it. Um, I could go over some of the things that I, wh what I like to do is just play sections, loop them, and then play ideas over them, uh, and just to get an idea of what's going on. It's a great practice technique. Um, but anyways, uh, so this one's an E minor, and uh, just to get to the point, let me go over some of the things I want to point out. Um, it, when I see E minor in my head, what I kind of do is I, um, and I'm trying to pull up the actual track on any tune, and I'll show you the technique I'm talking about. Anyways, um, E minor, I say to myself, G, realistically, it's in G major. And so all the modes will apply if you've watched my mode videos, which um, I'll link those down below also, that you end up with a, a wide array of modes and, and um, patterns that you can utilize with this. And that's the way I learned. There, there's a many ways to learn to, to do the guitar and to, to learn these um, your modes and your scales and stuff like that. This just happens to be the one that I use. Um, I've used it for years. Um, it was taught to me by my teacher, and I'm kind of passing it on now. Um, so, uh, for more information, go to that. And if you've got questions, feel free to, to uh, post them in the comments. And uh, don't be afraid to hit the like button and subscribe. <laughs> All right, I guess I had to say that because subscribers are good. And I have, I too have goals in life. <laughs> but anyways, uh, so let me find this track. It's in, uh, let me see where I put it. Um, there it is. Let me see. I have it under jam track file. Um, let me see. It's not sad. What did I say it was? Emotional Shed Backing Track by Sebastian Zeno. Here it is. Anyways, um, so with that, uh, let me just go over this and this will help us out here. So G major. Oops. I'm gonna so e ma uh, G major, I'll leave it a clean setting. G major. Turn that off, etc. cetera. Uh, a Dorian. B Phrygian, C Lydian, uh, D Mixolydian, uh, E minor, as we said before, um, would be up here. Um, and F sharp, uh, Locrian. So all those scale patterns will work. And I've, in the last few videos I've, I've made, I also talk about um, the arpeggios, the associated arpeggios that go along with this song. So in this case, we would have to analyze the, um, the chords that are being played and then um, superimpose, uh, or at least get under our, a certain area, or the arpeggios that are associated with that. I'm gonna use a certain area of the guitar, so um, kind of keep it simple, but they're all over the place on the guitar. So anyways, um, here we go. The chords are as follows, C, and that's another reason I like this. Uh, thanks for putting that on, Sebastian. Um, he got the, he has the chords right here, which saves me from having to figure it out by ear. But that's a good exercise for you viewers at home in terms of uh, ear training. C, D, E minor, and that repeats, and that's the A section. The B section goes A minor, B minor, E minor, and that looks like seven, nine, so I'm assuming maybe it's a seventh, E minor seventh with a ninth. That would be there. That chord, very cool chord. So there should be a um, F sharp in there. That's the ninth tone of E. 
and then a D chord slips in a D chord instead of an, another E minor ninth uh, in there. That being said, there's some melody notes in there that um, are extensions of these chords, which sound really pretty. Um, but what we need to do with the arpeggios will, will work. And if we consider the track as a whole, we could play with the melody notes that he has, or um, and we'll do that. So anyways, here's the uh, track. Now let's say I have a, I'm running this pro program called AnyTune and there's many different programs out there. Use whichever one you want, but theoretically it should have looping and the ability to pitch change for it to be really effective and useful as a practice tool or a learning tool even, which, so a lot of times what I'll do is this. So I'm gonna create a little loop here. So I have, start right here here's our little loop and this is the phrase C D C now you hear that high note that high note has a D note C actually ends up being this note, it, be, it, it ends up being this chord, which is like a second there. It has a high D in there, but anyways, neither here nor there. And then, and then, so anyways, here's the arpeggios I would use. So. Um, first one was C, we could go here, or this one is on 10, 9, 8 on the D, G, and B, respectively. Um, I have a C arpeggio, another C arpeggio right here, and if you wanted to, you could throw the a D string in there on the 5th fret, so 5th fret, 5th fret, 5th fret on the D, G, and B, and then your eighth fret on the B string. If you wanted to, you could play the eighth fret on the bottom string. That's a nice. Whatever. <laughs> um, if we slide that up to the seventh fret, it becomes a D. Same shape. Our E minor is as follows, and this is, gets kind of interesting because here's your E minor, and this shows you how close the E minor and the A minor, uh, sorry, the E minor and the G, or even the E minor and the C chord are, are related. There's your C arpeggio, there's my E minor arpeggio. So E minor is this, nine on the G, uh, eight on the B, seven on the E, my C major is 10 on the D, 9 on the G, 8 on the B. There's my C major C arpeggio. So very closely related. Here's an E minor up here, 12th fret, B minor, 7th fret, 5th fret, A minor. Um, what else am I missing? Um, kind of got it all. Oh, also, what works for the C over here? There's a D up there. Um, the modes, this little area of the guitar here on the first finger being on the 7th, I guess you'd call it 7th position, some people would. The mode that's built on the third degree of the G major scale is your Phrygian. It looks like this. It's a 
the B Phrygian. Sounds like that too. Um, so it's gonna go uh, seven, eight, 10, seven, nine, 10, seven, nine, 10, seven, nine, seven, eight, 10, seven, eight, 10. And within that, and I went over this in my uh, modes video, reiterated here, is within that is your E minor. If I start with my first finger on the seventh fret of the A string, it's an E minor, and I play down what I just did, it's an E minor scale. And then there's my E minor arpeggio. There's my A, a arpeggio, sorry, C arpeggio. A minor, which I think I forgot to go over that. Is that that's right here. Um, this one's kind of cool. Um, I throw your second finger, try it with your second finger on the G string on the ninth fret, third finger on the B on the 10th fret, first finger on the eighth. Looks just like a, your A minor shape. E minor, E minor, A minor, D, sorry, C, D, E, E minor. So, so on and so forth. And then a G chord in there for good measure. So those are some of the arpeggios that we want to play around with. Now, um, what will also work, I said this in the, the um, the modes video is that your pentatonics will work too obviously because the track says e minor you're and that's the sixth degree of uh g that will work but if we take that shape and play it down here on the fifth fret with the a minor to a certain degree maybe the b minor will work also Really, because eh, maybe, yeah, it will work. But let's try it. We'll try it within context. Uh, when we get to that B section, the minor section, I'll, I'll, we'll play around with it. It will work also. But mm, let's try it. Here's the track. I'll put some distortion on there and reverb. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, e minor. I like this note right here. 14th fret on the E string. Now, let's try and get out of the box. So that, that, that will work, and it'll sound a certain way. But now when we start throwing the arpeggios in there, it will sound start sounding, am I, I, I like to use the word pretty. It, all the pretty notes are there. So watch this. Let's, re, let's recap what we just did, and I'll slip in and out of some arpeggios. As we said, it was C, D, E minor in that first section. E minor arpeggio, E minor, there's the D, C, D, E minor, C.
A minor open. That B section was was cool because I did the B pentatonic little lick, E pentatonic lick, and then an A pentatonic. It worked. Um, the B sounded the best though. Let's try that again. I'm gonna see. That's what I mean. This is if you have it low. If you buy the track and then you load it and you can manipulate it as you see fit. I could create a loop just of this section, and we will. Here, listen to this. Here it comes. Here it is. There's a B to a C note. As we said, the, the progression goes C, D, E minor. When you hit that E minor, playing that minor third will help. So let's 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 loop this section here. Hold on. something in my head here hold on I, I, maybe I may, I'm gonna see if this major seventh works here we go the reason I say that is that one of the notes in this is this note right here, which is creates a major seventh tone on that C chord, which is what it should be harmonically. Which also is the B up here. So watch this. Let's see if this will work. in pretty importantly which is that that note up here on the pentatonic Oops, let me try 
this again. Start. Let's start on the E minor. E minor. So it's E minor. B Phrygian. A Dorian. Let's see how that sounds. Try it again. So. So, three areas of the neck, utilizing our E minor mode, Aeolian mode, or E minor, Phrygian, the bottom two strings, and then our Dorian in A. Nice little exercise. This is for here we go. So E minor, B Phrygian, A Dorian. Listen, let's try. That. Sorry, give me a second here. Here we go. Here we go. E minor. A Dorian. Try it again. Here we go. E minor. B Phrygian. A Dorian. One more time. I'm looping it. Here we go. That's the idea. I skip those mistakes. But that's why we practice and that's why it's good um, to play to these because you can work on ideas, you can work out melodies and, and, and it's fun. And when you find something cool, own it and it becomes yours. Uh, a cool way to play a note, a vibrato, anything you do. I mean, I, don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I'm making mistakes. Um, but work on your scale patterns, work on your arpeggio patterns. Work, utilize these things because they're called jam tracks so you're supposed to jam with them this is part of the fun of music the more you do of this the less apprehension you'll have when you're playing in a live situation the less uh daunting it'll seem if i made all those mistakes in front of people well not my buddies here on the youtube thing but in a practice session, I'd be like, oh, God, I suck. I'm embarrassed. And you don't need to be like that. I mean, yeah, make a mistake. It's no big deal, you know. But um, you can make the, you can woodshed, make your mistakes and, and learn from them. I think in some ways easier here in woodshedding these uh, patterns, these modes, these arpeggio shapes and these ideas with a jam track. That's why they're, that's why you got to, that's why they're here for, that's what they make them for. So you can play to them and, and put your ideas within context of, of music. I highly encourage this. Um, 
this is not to replace the metronome. I mean, metronome helps you develop your timing and these will too, but because they're in time. So um, a lot of times if I'm, I, I'll play to these and sometimes I'll feel like I'm lagging behind. I'm, I'm getting older, my fingers are older. I, I'm not up to speed and this helps a lot. So even for somebody who's been playing for as long as I have, it helps and I think it's well worth doing. So, all right, have fun, have fun at home. Hopefully this helps. If you have questions, please post them in the comments. Um, hit subscribe, I guess I'm supposed to say that. Yeah, I, I would like some, some more subscribers and uh, more questions. Any question, <laughs> does this help? I hope it helps. Um, all right, take care, bye.